In the niche of the gospel, there's a grappling with Jesus and the temple. And we hear that Jesus didn't just purify or cleanse the temple. He sent all the people responsible for financing the temple out. Now, first I should confess that I'm still in our stores that we're having to deal with every bureaucrat possible in downtown Chicago trying to replace all those ideas that were stolen. So the idea of bureaucrat death turning over and running out the door maybe was a little bit too appealing to me. But I think it's, it's a very, very important thing to think about. You know, Jesus basically took the financial gut out of the temple. It wasn't just a matter of reforming it. Especially in the gospel where that story is sandwiched in between the cursing of the fig tree. The fig tree is useless to next time and see. But you can't collaborate with this way. You can't realize, you can't achieve a base of love and justice and try to mix that in somehow with a collaboration with Let's just put in quotes for a moment, empire. Now, do we have empire, right? Don't we have to think to ourselves that the rock grew asparagus when the United States government invaded? Would we ever really know very much about Iraq? Some kind of joke would say, Lord, it's not the way of teaching geography to U.S. people. Well, now here we are, I put another picture for a thing. Every two minutes we could count a drone craft vehicle taking off with the runway to Creech Air Force Base and many pilots are practicing not by going into cockpits but by going inside of trailers. But when those drones, some are called predators, some are called reapers, and the reapers are hunter killer weapons and they're armed with 500 pound bombs and laser hellfire guided missiles. So they're not just the castle spot. They also can become the fighter plane. But when they lift off from the runway in Afghanistan or Pakistan, as soon as they're airborne, then inside the trailer, the pilot manipulates that vehicle and can decide when it's time to fight by shooting the bomb. The pilot is inside a creature for his base in Nevada. Well, when we see these kinds of realities going on, we can't ask ourselves why. Why is the United States wanting to stretch an arm of military might, albeit without the soldiers inside the aircraft, over these faraway lands in Afghanistan, in Pakistan? And I think it has a great deal to do with resources that we would like to control, we like to control the pipelines, and we're now talking about pipeline stands. We'd like to control the flow and the pricing of these resources. We'd like to be able to have plain faith in those reaches. And this, I think, has a great deal to do with why the United States is now shifting in this war system away from Iraq and toward the stance, as you might say. And so, can we expect that we can go along with empire, kind of collaborate with empire? Well, again, I want to think some more about that idea of emptying the temple of the money changers and really selling the end of the temple authority. Because what Jesus says in the scriptures is, you have turned my father's home in the Gospel of John into a den of thieves. You have turned my father's house of prayer into a den of thieves. Now, a den of thieves, this is the place where people are doing the thieving. It's the safe house where you go and count the money. The den of thieves is the safe house. And so Jesus was challenging those who had turned the temple into a safe house and I wonder if it ties our very own churches, our very own faith establishments, our sometimes a safe house in as much as the empire would like us to let them function as a smoke screen, covering up the real religion that's so often. 
in our country, unbridled consumption, a national religion of shopping, a desire to be able to consume as much fossil fuel as we want, as though there were no tomorrow, and if we keep it up, there might not be for the children, for the beloved offspring, for the next generation. And yet, we can go to the places of worship and feel like, yes, we hear, yes, we pray to be the good people. But we're pretty much a part of the provisions of people all around the world, the suffering that comes when bodies are torn and marked by weapons, when the doctor is trying to heal the people who barely breathe from the mutants, when the children are traumatized, and then my young friend B. Bella said, Oh, my life, I will have these memories now. Never will I be able to forget. The double said it has been built, and the real peace, glory, travel once with us to Iraq. And he was a bit deaf, but I'm not feeling, I don't think, terribly upbeat. He looked at the itinerary we had developed, and he said to me, when do we talk to the teenagers? And I said, well, we, uh, we'll work that out by tomorrow. And so we went to the Dominican Sisters, who ran a high school. It wasn't uh, a high school where they taught me this, but we asked, could we possibly bring them Bell Peak Glorious into their school? And she said, oh, yes, yes, that would be fine. I will work that out. And so we went, and as they were walking up to the classroom, the woman said to me, really, these girls are very upset. I don't know how I can prepare you and your team for just how angry they are. And I said, well, you know, maybe it's what we need to hear. Now, this was in a dictatorship, and any teenager talking to foreigners would certainly have been given some press, some scripting. But I still remember every word they said. First, one young teenager stood up. She said, you come and you say, you will do, you will do, but nothing changes. Me, I am 15. Can you tell me what is the difference between me, I am and someone she is 16 in your country, I'll tell you, our emotions are frozen. We cannot feel, but she could feel. I think the London and so it was so great she had to sit down. And the next door, her friend, Fatima, popped up. My father, he runs electric company for all of the guns, and he I call my study by cut the light at night. And my mother, she cried because we could not get for my grandmother medicine for her asthma. And my mother and my grandmother, they cried because of the baby in our big family. They cannot say, what is the fault? What have we done? And what would be done to us if we were to do to any other country in the world what is being done to us now? And she sang. And I could go on for a very long time, really, telling you the stories of teenagers echoing that kind of frustrated, befuddled, and yet same question. What is the fault that can be done, and who are the criminals? Now, I would not like at all to suggest that we are criminals, or that all faults be down back to people here in the United States, here in the United States. But certainly I do want to suggest that now is a time when our 